All right, well, thanks everybody for coming. This is great, it's great showing. Um, so this is gonna be an exciting event uh, where our Chemistry 155 students have for uh, a couple lab periods this semester uh, come up with their own ideas of cool experiments that you can do chemistry in action. Um, you know, you should think of, don't do this to yourself at home, but hey, this is actually why I became a chemist. I used to do this stuff at home when I was growing up. I'd go in the backyard when my mom was at work and try to blow up my, my G.I. Joes and Lego houses <laughs> and stuff. Seriously. Um, but I'm still here to tell the tale. Uh, but we're not going to be blowing huge things up, but we're going to be doing some chemistry uh, to create things, to change, turn things cold into flame, some explosions, all kinds of neat stuff. Um, and so these are all experiments that, that the students in Chem 155 have put together by themselves and developed. Um, and so I think we've got 12 different experiments, something like that, so a lot of fun stuff. Um, so we'll go through each of them and, and each of the student or groups of students will tell you a little bit about what they're going to do and um, a little bit of the chemistry behind it and then show you what's happening. So we'll start off with Nick. Yep. So my reaction will be uh, barium hydroxide, uh, barium with two hydroxide ions in it. When it reacts with solid uh, ammonium chloride, it actually creates a very, very, very endothermic reaction and when it does that, it uh, to destroy the, uh, the energy that both crystals uh, have that keeps them together. It takes all the energy from the outside of its surroundings and it pretty much cools everything down to a, to a really, 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 really cold state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add both those to here. Products of this reaction are actually sort of it's a barium chloride, so barium with two chlorides added to it, uh, water, and also uh, it needs to be really close to this fume hood because it'll uh, it'll make ammonia too. So just to sort of make sure the ammonia is. It'll take a while, but it starts going. <laughs> In practice, I think it went a little faster. Yeah. It's not seem to be working quite well right now.
you tell us again what, what we're expecting? From coldness. Coldness. Okay. Just mix these two solids together and it should get cold. There we go. It is. So it's frozen. It's frozen to the block of wood, actually. Right here. It's very cold, as you can see. Yeah. Huh? That's pretty cool. Just trying to make it so cold. Okay, well, cool. Thanks. Okay, so our next one is going to be Caleb, uh, who's going to be, uh, well, I'll let him describe it. Okay, just get this set up here. And then what I have is I have made uh, two solutions. Um, and what I'm going to make is a chemiluminescent fountain, which is uh, when these two chemicals meet, they are going to mix together and begin to glow. And then it's making a light from chemical energy, but it's not going to produce any heat. And then to make this a fountain, I have filled this with ammonia gas. And then when I squirt water into it, Hopefully it'll turn, um, it'll make an area of low pressure and then suck up these two liquids. And if you could just turn off the lights. This is the same type of reaction that you'd find in glow sticks. And then what I've done is I've just taken it and made it into a fountain. And then after a few minutes, it'll um, both the solutions will turn into like a black um, substance and then, or black liquid, and then it'll stop glowing. And And I still have a little bit of leftover solution, so what I can do is then I can just take this. Like that. And then as you can see, this one's already starting to stop glowing. and experiments happen in real life. What do you know? In the ocean. The ocean? Certainly. Lots of it happens in the ocean. Closer to home? Fireflies? Yeah. Fireflies do basically the same reaction. Um, now we have a cool thing called non-Newtonian fluids by Angelica and Abby. So what we've got here is three um, experiments that you can do at home. Well, two of them, you can use home products. Um, one we actually had to order, which is the, the Gorgon. Gorgon. Um, we'll explain that. So for our first, we made Flubber. So flubber, it's a polymer, uh, which a polymer is a long chain of repeating units. Uh, what we used was Elmer's glue and borax. Um, so just it's a lot. It's like a laundry detergent booster. So you can put it in your laundry and it boosts your detergent. Okay. Uh, so what the Elmer's glue contains is a polyvinyl acetate and the borax includes uh, boron and when you mix these two together uh, they can't move so they can't flow as easily which is why they stick together um, and actually like this can bounce not like a bouncy ball but it can actually bounce it's very like when you touch it it's moist it's not wet but it feels wet almost it's very 
You can mold it into like pretty much anything. You can make animals or shapes. Or, okay. It's kind of like this like experiment. It's just kind of like fun, playing sort of thing. So that's Flubber. Um, for our second one, we did our second new Newtonian fluid, not Newtonian, is the Ooblick. Uh How Ooblick got its name was from a Dr. Seuss book. Um, so it's basically, it's solid and liquid properties. You can kind of see it um, flowing down. It's completely like solid, but if you like pick it up in your hands, like it's it's kind of hard right now. If you let it sit for too long, it gets really hard. A Newtonian fluid has a constant viscosity, so if this does not have a constant viscosity, so when you force stress on it, so it's solid, then it'll melt. It, because we made it last night, I um, think the mixtures um, harden it, um, so it doesn't it's not doing what it's supposed to, like completely. But completely. It, the idea is that it'll start f flowing like a liquid. So, in that we just used cornstarch, uh, food coloring, and that's, warm water. Yep, that's that's it. it. It's just cornstarch and water. It's kind of cool. So, s simple home products that you can use. And then for our Last demo, we um, make slime. <laughs> so, Gorgon, what we use, one of the products is a polymer. Um, it's a long chain poly alcohol, uh, capable of uh, complexation with the borates ions. And so, um, when we made the borate solution, so the, we used the borax again, and then we mixed it with the guar, guar gum. It made a slimy jello-like. It's very so much like jello, but it's wet. So like if you stick your finger in it, your finger comes out wet. But it's slimy, it's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All of these fluids are just fun to play with, and it's practical, you can do it right at home which is what we did, so. We spent yeah. most of our time playing with it. <laughs> yeah, it's just fun playing. And that's our demo. Those are okay, our next one is gonna be Logan, who's gonna show us uh, how to burn money. How to not burn money, or burn money, or uh, risk burning a $50 bill. This is another experiment you can do at home. I mean, all you need is a dollar bill and a match. Basically, it's just going to be a simple combustion reaction. All you need is a fuel and an ignition source. My fuel, in this case, is the money. Get more matches. <laughs> <laughs> by now. Sorry about that. You notice that it started burning a little bit there. When I was doing this experiment in the lab, what happened was the entire bill just combusted. And um, what I did actually just before this was I soaked it in a 50% alcohol, 50% water solution. Since alcohol is very volatile, it will readily turn in, it will very readily turn into a gas as long as you have a good ignition source like a flame. However, the water has a very high specific heat, meaning it needs a lot of energy to even evaporate. So all the energy that the alcohol was creating was being soaked in by the water rather than being soaked in by the bill, keeping the bill perfectly intact. That's it. Okay, we've got Colton who shows the thermite reaction. <laughs> yeah, we've all got our goggles on, right? Can we move away? 
All right, I have the uh, smashing thermite reaction, and uh, basically what that is is I've got one cannonball that's kind of rusty, got another cannonball that's rusty, and I got aluminum foil around it. And what happens is when I'm going to strike those, the kinetic energy from my arm sliding past these when I smash them, it's going to take the iron oxide and it's going to do a redox action with the aluminum and it's going to make aluminum oxide and elemental iron. And this reaction actually heats up to about 2,200 degrees Celsius, which is about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you want, do you want the lights on? Yeah. Um, basically, the main concern, don't break your fingers. Yeah. I can do another one. There we go. Jessica, tell us about burning ice. So I'm going to do a burning ice demo. And we're going to start with some calcium carbide. So calcium carbide is um, highly react reactant with water. So as the ice melts, it's going to create a very flammable gas. carbide and the melting water. So um, water and calcium carbide create acetylene gas, which is, which is what causes it to burn. Um, okay, next we have Rick. So I'm going to be doing an oscillation oxidation reduction reaction and basically I'm going to get set up and then explain the chemistry as we go. going to happen in simple terms is when you shake these solutions they're going to change colors. Now within each of these there's a solution of sodium hydroxide and glucose and oxygen gas left in the empty spaces. So basically when you shake the bottles the oxygen gas that's in there dissolves into the solution of sodium hydroxide and sugar and in doing so changes the acidity of the compound. And depending on which indicator you use, you'll get different colorations. If I can get Thank you. 
So with this one, with the methyl blue, it takes a little bit of time to get set up and stay. At right now, all the oxygen has been used. There's no transfer of electrons from the oxygen to the sodium glucose solution. But when you shake it, the oxygen dissolves into the solution and reacts with the methyl blue indicator to make a blue solution. And the same happens with this one, but instead of just one color, it's going to change all the way. This one's a three-stage reaction as opposed to just the methyl blue, which is just going from clear to blue. This one, at its resting phase, is going to be yellow. And then when you shake it even more, it'll go from red to green. That's the stop and go type of reaction. But it's slow. <laughs> As you do this reaction more and more, it actually speeds up faster and faster because the oxygen right now, there's a huge concentration of the oxygen within the bottles. And so it's going to take longer for them to regress back to a more basic state. So the more and more you mix these and shake them up, the less and less they're going to actually change. So the first couple times you do it, it's going to take a little while, but eventually it's just going to happen so fast and so much eventually the point where it won't at all. See the methyl blue one changing back? All the way back to clear. Then you can shake it up again and do it all over. Keep progressing. Goes back to red first. And should go back a little bit quicker to yellow. times you think uh, you could cycle through? Oh yeah, at least a dozen. Easy. The higher the concentrations. You can change the recipe. Right now you start out with basically a thousand milliliters of water, 20 grams of sodium hydroxide, and 12 grams of glucose. Uh, but the original recipe you can do for smaller volumes, bigger volumes, doesn't matter. But the problem with the bigger volumes is sometimes measurements is going to take a little bit longer. A lot more. And this one's already gone back to clear and blue again. So, uh, arm workout. Well, maybe we can maybe we can set it up here on the side and watch this as they go through that. Then. So that's the presentation. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Next we have Rachel and Stephanie. Okay. So what we have here is a with ethanol to make a 0.2 molar solution for each. And here we have nickel chloride, strontium chloride, cupric chloride, and sodium chloride. And actually, when these solutions are heated, the um, electrons and the ions actually get really excited and move to another energy state. And when they return to their ground state, they give off a color. Um, they give light off in the color spectrum. So they will actually give off new light. Which way? That way? Okay. Okay, and we are using gloves because we don't want ethanol all over us. Preferable. Okay, so we're just going to use a regular Bunsen burner. Okay, so 
one of the substances they use in street lights that's um, the yellow color that you see in street lights like you're seeing here is actually from the NACL yeah. okay so next we have cupric chloride and that probably be yeah. okay and this one's more of a green and this is actually what they use in fireworks when they're creating fireworks um, they take different compounds, um, different metal compounds, and they um, this is one, right? And they place them in the fireworks, and that will change the color. So the purples that you see, the reds that you see, um, that's actually the metal compounds. And we have, um, so I'm actually going to, I think we have, okay. so strontium chloride is actually uh, one of the common ones that you find in fireworks. If I can turn it on. And that's the red color that you see. Okay. And, and they also use barium chloride. That's yeah. another popular one, and that will give you green. No, this one's nickel. That one's nickel. Yeah, that one's nickel. This one's nickel, and this will actually give more sparkles, I guess. Yeah, there's a little bit of sparkle to the flame. And that's often used in fireworks as well. Which one do you want to use? Doesn't matter. Okay. Alright. So then. Okay. Let's move the other. <laughs> yeah. And then that's just a mixture of colors that have been sprayed all over the table. All right, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Eric and Jeff and Rodolfo. sucrose, which is table sugar, and sulfuric acid. Uh, when you mix the two, the acid will dehydrate the sugar, and you'll basically be left with uh, carbon, and that reaction releases a lot of heat, uh, so it ends up putting out a lot of steam, and the carbon will rise out of the beaker in a black tube. Unfortunately, it takes a little while to get going, so the uh, first part's going to be a bit boring.
Yeah, that steam it's producing smells very, very, very strongly of burnt sugar. Um, the first thing I just want to go over is hydrogen, we, uh, the reason we don't have hydrogen here is because you cannot store it. Um, it's extremely small, uh, hydrogen gas, which is um, one of the big obstacles with getting the hydrogen fuels or for it being plausible. So today we're using uh, HCl, which is a very strong acid, so we diluted it. And um, we're using zinc. Um, one of the basic properties of acids, um, especially strong acids, is they really want to give up um, the hydrogen. And zinc really wants um, to bond with chlorine. So it is a higher producing capacity than hydrogen, so it's going to take the place of so the chloride in HCl uh, forming zinc chloride. And you'll be seeing here. So right now, um, hydrogen gas is forming, and zinc chloride is forming. And this is the first reaction, or the two reaction. If you don't like loud noises, you may want to plug your ears. It's going to be really loud. It's going to be loud. It's going to be really loud. It's going to be loud. My name is Jerry Schneider. This is Patrick. And this is Hydrogen Balloon. <laughs> <laughs> potassium iodide and that's as a or being used as a catalyst to kind of speed up the reaction um, and what happens is as the hydrogen is being like given off or whatever the dish soap captures it turning it into a foam and then um, it like you can use food coloring and that will cover over the bubbles um, so that's kind of what gives it its color 
and it's a really exothermic reaction, so as it takes place, you'll see like steam being let off, and that's kind of the heat from it. This is the catalyst. So we're going to do ours first. Ours is a little different than theirs. Um, we are first adding 50 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. And then 5 ml of the dish soap. can add food coloring. We're going to add yellow and a little bit of blue. And then we're just going to add the 8 grams of the potassium iodide. Instead of adding the solid potassium iodide, we um, dissolved it and heated it up. And let's see uh, what's the difference. faster, um, so that's why that happened. Um, last time we used, or we did this, it actually hit the ceiling in the chem lab and left a mark there, so that's why that's there, but. Yeah. Uh, last time we used a more catalyst and then heated it up, um, up to higher temperature. Mm -hmm. So if you go to uh, the, the chem lab, see a dark spot on the ceiling. <laughs> that's how I fun. So since this reaction produces so much oxygen, you can light a match and light this. I'm blowing this out and I put it back in and it should light this on fire. Maybe fresh, Maybe more recent right. stuff. Ours? Yeah. No, it worked if did we waited a little bit oh, longer. Oh, did it? So, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Didn't work right away. Try again. Yeah, we can try theirs. One last time. It's supposed to light on fire. Make 
most of the foam will disappear. So basically, it's very, very simple. We have liquid nitrogen, which is at like negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 196 degrees Celsius. And we have a mixture of um, cream, half and half sugar and some vanilla, and we're going to make you ice cream. And a cool party favor. It was a lot quicker in our experiment because we didn't make such a big batch for everybody. But so this is what the cream turns into as the liquid nitrogen boils up. anything you guys but we have ice cream and you can eat it we had to practice this a lot of times in the lab just to make sure yeah. that must be right <laughs> you guys can see it now.